One of the biggest occurrences in the past 12 months as related to codec adoption was um, you know, Chrome's support for ATVC. Um, how significant is that for you know, the people that you're representing? And what can you tell us about how it supports DRM? For me, as a general consensus, HEVC start really starts to shine on resolution 1080, 1080p and up, given its encoding efficiencies and its transformation transform, uh, transformation tools it uses. So, uh, but since most consumers already are watching high definition content on smart TVs, set top box, we're using apps that already have the support built in. So. And since most premium content is consumed already supporting HEVC playback, the, the, the fact that Chrome support HEVC, the near-term impact is somewhat muted uh, uh, in my horizon, but we shall see for, for the longer term. Uh, I definitely see it, see it as promising. Igor, you're, you're, uh, uh, some tech people broke the story from Bitmovin, um, which was pretty exciting. Yeah. So what, yeah, what's was... your, go ahead. It was interesting. So um, we uh, we reported we reported that as a bug like six years ago, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they fixed it. <laughs> uh, it's fixed. It's fixed. It's amazing. Um, uh, so I, I I mean I think it's great. It certainly adds uh, you know increases the uh, percentage of devices um, of clients capable uh, or theoretically capable. Right, you still need a hardware based decoder on the device to. Uh, uh, to decode HVC, but in theory, uh, right, that number is like 85, 86% now um, of, of browsers who, uh, which would be able to decode HVC um, on compatible devices. I guess the challenge is still a uh, lack of DRM, right? So there's no support in a wide bind CDM for, uh, uh, for HVC on Chrome, unfortunately. And, you know, Hopefully that changes uh, to Alex's point. That's a must for any you know premium content provider. Uh, certainly any of the SVOD streaming services. Um, but I think it's a really positive step in the right direction. Uh, we were excited and surprised to see it. And um, yeah, kudos to uh, Google for making that happen. Okay, Alex, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that. Uh... The best really thing to come out of uh, you know that news is that I think it really improves the perception of HVC as a widely supported codec. Because uh, I would say that like browsers were really the exception. Uh, I think HVC adoption actually reached critical mass I think several years ago, uh, because with the exception of browsers, it had already you know become a standard on all the smart TVs and all the streaming sticks. Uh, you know it was on every gaming console, and so uh mobile uh phones as well and so yeah we were at a point where essentially it was really just browsers that were uh, lagging behind so so i'm glad they did it because i think it just is a reminder that okay hvc is here it's a reality how, how did it affect your service though i mean are you sending you know what percentage more video or hvc encoded video are you sending to the browser now or was it like a so, nothing burger yeah, I mean, ironically, for for an SVOD service like HBO Max or Discovery Plus, it actually doesn't really have an impact because uh, it still lacks the security coding, it still lacks integration with DRM, and so until that's supported in Chrome, uh, we can't really take advantage of uh, of the HVC decoder there. Um, we could potentially take advantage of it for like playback of trailers, ads, like other short form content that's not uh, typically protected. Um, but for yeah, majority of our content, we actually still can't take advantage of it. So, so that's why I say like you know at least for us, like it's really more, it's good for the perception of HVC in terms of you know making sure that everyone is aware that it is now a widely supported codec. Uh, but uh, practically, it's it, it didn't really have much of an impact. 